with uh, been trapping basically since I was 13, a few years ago. <laughs> and uh, been trapping uh, a long line for Fox since 1996. In four weeks in the fall, we run about a 200 mile circle every day. If you want to get numbers, that's what you got to do. And if you've been trapping any time at all, you know that it's work. If you don't start two days before season trying to secure a farm or whatever, but you get out there during the summer, knock on the doors, present yourself as a gentleman or a lady, and well dressed, and if you can get some cards made up, that's a good idea too. Um, don't have to be anything special, just your name, what you do, and so they can get in touch with you in case they happen to catch your dog or whatever. Okay? That helps a lot. All right, I'm going to real quick here just be quiet and go through making the set like I make. Um, every set that I go to, I drive up to with my truck. If it's not messed with, I don't even get out. Get on down the road, run 200 miles, can't fool around. Okay? All right. You'll see different things that I do that are a little different. And I, I need to let you know just because I do it this way doesn't mean you're doing it wrong. All right? Don't want anybody getting upset with me. <laughs> Them's dandies. <laughs> when I stake, I double stake with an 18 and a 24. And we'll try to be good. No photos. This time, right now. <laughs> 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 well, that is profound. <laughs> we are friends. <laughs> and you didn't even know it. No. <laughs> no. Stay quiet. <laughs> Fan cover. Unused. <laughs> <laughs> I use two two uh, pieces, two little squares. That seems to cover it a lot better. takes us to do that. Uh, like I say, we use a one and three quarter sleeper creek. The reason I use that there is because uh, coyotes or flocks <coughs> hold 
Anything that gets in them. Up to 100 pounds. Okay, real quick. Um, uh, my son rides with me, so it's not like I'm having to get out, sit on my side, and go over to the other side of a road. Uh, we always run down farm lanes and try to find um, area fence rows that come out or inter intersecting roads uh, to, to put your the sets on location. Um, one of the important things I'd like to emphasize, uh, the most important thing about fox trapping or canine trapping or trapping in general, uh, most folks think it's the location, but it's not. The most important thing is using some common sense of where you're going to set that trap. Alright, someone might say, well, if I've got permission on the farm to trap, then I'm okay. I can use any size trap I want to, 600 sterling or whatever. Uh, and that may be true, but a lot of times when you get a farmer that will let you come in and trap, you will also let the coon hunters come in. Because he wants to get rid of the coons. And you might say, well, I got permission to trap that dog shouldn't be anywhere near my traps. Well, he's going to be, especially if you're using a canine lure. Um, so, common sense, um, it should be number one uh, tool in trapping. Uh, where am I setting? What type of set am I setting? Am I putting snares out? Uh, are there going to be dogs come through hunting? Well, you know, that should dictate on exactly what you use and where you use it. Um, been trapping, like I say, since I was 13. Uh, and I also am a houndsman. I raise mountain curs and plot hounds, so I'm on both sides. Um, both sides of the sport. And so I know um, both feelings. You know, when a dog gets caught in a trap, I want to be able to let it loose without any damage, uh, you might say, well, I need to get numbered. I need to get numbered. If you use a one and three quarter sleeping creek, which I use exclusively uh, on my canine set, uh, you can let any dog out. I've caught Jack Russells in them mm -hmm. uh, that were out squirrel hunting and no foot damage. A little bit of a yelling, a little bit of hollering, but uh, I think most of that is just when the trap goes off, it scares them questions on anything I've said. Anyone? Yes, I'm married. <laughs> <laughs> My wife down here in the front row. I've been married 47 years. And, uh, compete and set traps too. Pretty good. Uh. All right, there you go. Okay, location. What do I look for when I pull in a farm? Well, let me back up just a minute. Let me uh, touch on scent control. All right, is that an issue with canines? Should we be aware of our scent? How many noticed how I set the trap? You just your feet touch. Kneel down. You don't kneel down. I'm 65 years old and had quadruple bypass in 2007, so if I can do it, you surely can. Uh, unless, of course, you had back surgery or something like that. Then make sure you got a good dealing pad that is scent free. You don't want a dealing pad that's been sitting in your garage. Uh, you don't want any boots that have been sitting in your garage and gathering <coughs> permeating smells because canines, especially coyotes, are very, very cautious. Someone said, yeah, man, they're smart in my area. Well, that's not a good choice of words. How about cautious? Because a coyote or a fox is only as smart as you make them. <laughs> Stop and think of that. Uh, when they get dirt flying up in their face from missing them in a set, 
they associate that bad experience with that lure smell that's down in that hole. And it's not necessarily, matter of fact, it's not that there's a trap in there and uh, and that guy's that coyote saying, that's a sleepy creek one and three quarter down there. <laughs> I mean, we need to understand that, that uh, an animal is an animal and they're only as smart as we make them uh, with situations like that. Um, do I like to uh, catch them the first time every time? Sure do. <laughs> Does it happen? Sure don't. <laughs> there are times when, um, you know, maybe they'll... Um, I like to get a, about an 85% catch on each approach. In other words, uh, if I get, say, 100 fox come up to a set, I like to catch at least 85 of them on that first step in there. Uh, where I had my trap set there, I had it set back about eight inches from the hole. I crowd the hole pretty tight for fox. And I found recently also that that worked well for coyotes. Someone might say, how's that? Well, if you ever notice the canine, when they're investigating a hole, they creep their feet up close to the, to the, to the front of the hole to get their nose down in there. So, can you catch them if the trap's 12 inches back? Sure. Yeah. Got a better chance if you're up tight, with my experience. And uh, I'd like to say again that this is the way I do it. And if you do it differently, that's not saying that you're doing it wrong. This is uh, how you know I've experienced it over the years. Uh, just for the record, I don't like to brag, but you need to know uh, certain things. In my best year, 53 days of trapping, I caught 477 fox in the eastern panhandle. <laughs> Um, that's photos, that documentation of that. Um, we're not doing that now because of the diets. They're moving in pretty heavy over in the Eastern Panhandle. I'm sure they're probably pretty thick in this area already. Uh, so our numbers are dwindling down to about 200 now. So, and it's going to get worse. All right. Any questions? Okay, as far as scent control goes, what do I wear on my feet in my water bed? There it is. Well, I wear shoes. <laughs> <laughs> I'm from West Virginia, but you know, you still got to wear boots. <laughs> I wear the lacrosse um, burlies. Yep. And I do that for a couple reasons. And they're designated for hunting and trapping only. I do not get out at the gas station, fill the truck up with them on, uh, stepping in oil and gas and everything. Uh, I try to keep them as, as uh, pristine as I can and, and odor free of uh, any foreign odors. And when I get to the farm, I'll pull into the farm and a lot of times, um, I'll just get out right at the beginning of the farm and start squishing my feet around in the grass to sort of get the grass smell on there. And sometimes if I'm in a, uh, yeah, a, pasture. Uh, a pasture, I may find a small cow pie and maybe just touch the bottom of my boot on that. They're used to that. Don't want to um, annihilate the boot with it because my son sitting on the other side of the truck. I don't like to hear him rattle all too much. But anyway, um, one of the uh, greatest trappers, in my opinion, that ever lived was my mentor. And, and he lived about 50 miles from me and taught me um, about everything that I know on the long line. Uh, Mr. Pete Leggett. You ever hear him, anyone? Two of you did. That's yeah. great. And anyway, he's passed away now. And uh, before I met him, I would average about 12 fox a year. 
that was the way that I was trapping. And of course, I wasn't long lining. I was just going in, uh, having fun, and going to a couple different farms and setting a couple traps. That uh, talking to Pete got me interested in the long line. You want to make some money? That's the way you're going to have to do it. Numbers is the game. And there's if you're a lazy person or lazy at heart, and I'm not trying to be nasty or anything, just trying to be plain and simple, it, you don't want a long line. No. Because it is a lot of work. I mean, a lot of work. My season starts about uh, in July or August by visiting the farms that I trapped the previous year and uh, reassuring them and, and getting the permission back again for another year. I always ask, is anyone else going to be trapping on this farm? And they say, yeah, so and so is going to be over here. I'll say, well, when he's done, then I'll come in. I do not like to trap on a farm that someone else is trapping at the same time. Mm -hmm. And it just keeps everything at a peaceful level. Yeah, confusion there. <laughs> uh, how about how about uh, odors that scare off coyotes and fox? Can you think of any? Gas. Gas. All right. We covered that about our boots. We don't want any kind of oil products that smell on our clothing or anything. Uh, and as far as the boots, I touched base on that. And as far as the gloves, just the old jersey gloves. That's what I wear. Um, never had a problem with if they if they get a little bit um, dirty, I'll just get another pair out and put them on. But um, as far as lures go, baits. Are there any lure makers or, or <laughs> bait makers here in the, in the audience? But I use absolutely no bait at all. Um, like I say, I'm running 200 miles. I got to book it. I cannot be fooling around in a bait basket and keeping it away from my... My set, uh, the set making tools and things as such. So I use this, um, and this is um, a lure made by a fella real close to me by the name of Leggett's. And that's what we use. And when I squirt it down in the hole, right in the bag. Hey, numbers don't lie. I mean, this works for me, and uh, it'll work for you too. Okay, questions, anyone? What is it you said you use? The lure? Yeah. It's Leggett's Leggett? Canine Exciter. Yeah. Canine Exciter? That's right. Yeah, it has a number one and a number two. The number two is a little stronger for colder weather. And that's what we use because I'm not lazy, but I like to do things easy if I can. Okay. Yeah, that's what I use, um, and I guess they're using it all over the country, a lot of folks, but there are a lot of other good lords and baits out there. Don't get me wrong, because these guys will be lynching me after a while. Don't make that a lot. Uh, yeah. Anyone else have a question on, on anything? Yeah. Oh, we didn't. Right. Um, I take a shower about. <laughs> no, I think he means the lure. Oh, the lure. Right. <laughs> well, it, that actually uh, it depends on the weather. If we're getting uh, like, if it rains for a day or so, uh, this lure here that I use is water soluble, so it's going to mix with the water and then soak back down in the ground. If you don't have certain kind of soil where it won't soak down for a week. But uh, probably about every four or five days, uh, give it just a little squirt down in the hole. You don't have, it doesn't take a whole lot. Um, 
What, what you're going to try to do, you're going to try to set on the canine travel route. Okay? That, that takes care of probably 90% of your problem there if you set where he's going to travel. Make sense? Alright, if he's not coming through there, the best lure in the world's not going to going to help you catch him because he's not going to smell it. Alright, so you, you need to get on location and then when you do get on location and you find the spot where you want to set your, your sets, you want to look a little bit closer just in case you do get a rainy weather or, or something like that. You want to try to find a little mound. Not, not a big mound, but just something that's Elevated just a little higher than everything else to make your set there. Uh, that way the water will tend to run off instead of down into it. That's just another little nugget here that I picked up uh, over the years. How long will you leave a trap out of sight? At a set? Yeah. Um, um, what I do, I, I set the first two weeks in November up until deer season starts. That trap will stay in the ground. You'll stay, leave it set there for two weeks in yeah. one spot? Yeah, well it'll come out of the ground when it gets, when I catch something. Mm -hmm. But it'll stay there, the same trap, until it starts rusting, if it does. If it starts rusting pretty good, I'll take it out and put another one in its place. Um, to catch anything. Uh, I set that same trap back. If I catch a skunk, a possum, um, somebody, the dog, a house cat, I'll turn it loose and then I'll set that trap back because that is one hot set after that. Um, a lot of guys will say they catch a possum, you need to change the trap. Not so. No, just set it back. You got a hot set there. You got to understand that if someone says, "Well, that smell is on my trap." Well, it is on your trap, but it's also everywhere he went around in the circle. So you've got one hot spot of animal smell, and it's not going to pick it up just on that trap because it's on on the whole surrounding area where he went in the circle there. Okay. Well, with different lures, you probably would have to do that. With this, like I said, it's water soluble, so I just squirt it down in the hole and maybe just a drop on the rim of the hole toward the back. Uh, and we, when we set in a location, we always try to find where the prevailing wind is, and we set two traps. One on this side of the travel lane and one on this side of the travel lane. Because just as sure as I've set this set on this side with the wind blowing this way, it's going to change that night and start blowing that way. So we always set at least two traps, sometimes three. I had a farmer call me one, one time where we had two traps set. And... Uh, he called me up it was just right after dusk and he said, Mr. Stevens, you got two foxes in there. You didn't set enough traps. There's more back there hollering. <laughs> so the next day we went back and took those two foxes out, set another trap, which made three. And that night we had triples there. Wow. Uh, we, we have a, probably a higher fox population than you do out here. Um, I think we always did because there's a lot of a lot of farmland. I trap primarily fields, field edges. Uh, love the tractor roads, the farm roads. I uh, love the the fence roads um, where a fence will come over and jut up to a uh, tractor road. I love waterways. You know what a waterway is? It's a low gully that comes through a field and then stops at a deadhead. That is a hot spot to set a pair of traps on each side of that waterway. 
they, it's like a magnet to them. They, they go down in there hunting mice and rabbits and things like that. Um, anyone else? I, I want to expound <coughs> on what you want to know, not necessarily, you know, what I just want to talk about. Do you carry uh, peat moss or you just use the dirt and stuff? I use peat moss in the colder weather. And I wanted to <laughs> make it clear that you want to get the sphagnum mm -hmm. peat moss. And that is, uh, it doesn't have any of the branches and, and the pieces, the big long pieces of bark. And it is pretty well uh, powdery and, and everything. And then also when I, when I pack the bottom of my my bed with peat moss and I bed my trap I'll put peat moss around the outside and take my fist and, and smack it down I want the only soft spot that he feels at the pain it's too late yeah. Yeah. <laughs> do you ever put anything in the hole like sheep's wool or any that's what he asked over there oh I was yeah, I was I, out there on I the stupid phone I don't do that uh, but there are certain lures that you have to do that mm -hmm. with. Uh, this here is water soluble and it'll go down in there and once it hits, it's there. I mean, I've gone back, I've gone back in the summer <coughs> where, uh, you know, I set a, a set worked. back in November mm -hmm. and back in the summer and they're still digging it. Be still working digging it, it that yeah. hole. Um, so that's a testimonial for that. And you know, like I say, I like to do it Quick and easy, if I can, right? I mean, keep it simple. Do you mix salt with your feet? Do I mix salt in with your feet? No. No. Be a reason to? no, we're not. That's the reason you use a peat moth, because it's bone dry. Uh, even when it gets a little bit wet, it's still workable, yep. in, in my, from my experience. Uh, I do, uh, when I use peat moth, I still use the toilet paper pan cover. I mean, there's just something up here. A lot of guys won't. They, a lot of guys just put peat moss over it and says it'll go down. But you get just a little bit of rain sprinkling on it mm -hmm. and that stuff there. And then you get tempers down in maybe 34, 33 degrees. Something's going to get stiff down in there and, and it's going to just mess up on me. So there's just something in my brain that won't let me go without a pan cover. A lot of the guys will use the peat moss as their pan cover, and I'm, yeah, I agree with you. I don't. I'm not yeah, going to do that. That's what I was saying. It's just mm -mm. Uh, it might be all right, but I need every advantage that I can for these to catch these guys. You know what I'm saying? Uh, it's just getting. Uh, so many more coyotes in our area out there and uh, is a coyote smarter than a fox? Uh, no, My opinion? So. No. I don't think is so. Is he more cautious? Yeah, I yeah, think he is. I, th I think he's a survivalist and I think he will survive. Uh, eradicate? Never going to happen. Mm -mm. Uh, our fox numbers have dwindled way, way down. I think I mentioned this earlier from uh, that 477 years to now down about 150. And that's mainly due to the coyote population moving in. Uh, you're not going to catch near the numbers of coyotes that you did foxes in that certain area. Why is that? Because their range mm -hmm. is so much bigger than a fox. What square so mile for a fox? A lot bigger. If I miss a fox here tonight, I can count on him being back tomorrow night. That's oh. what I mean. Mm -hmm. If I miss a coyote here tonight, I might get another chance at him before the three season. Three or four five, or five. a week or two is out yeah. that I'm trapping there. Uh, I'll say three or four days. First approach is very, very important to me. Mm -hmm. I've got to catch him when I first approach or I may not get a second chance. How thick do you put your uh, whatever on top of your quarter tray? inch. How much? About a quarter inch. A quarter of an inch? I, I want it just out of sight. 
that's what I'm saying. You yeah. don't want it real. You don't want it real thick, you know, because that's that much more that his foot's going to be away from the jaws. Um, and another thing, a lot of a lot of people have uh, a lot of people have asked. Over and for him. Uh -huh. <laughs> I see why I'm watching. The short twist. That's hard in it. <laughs> he might get along just fine. Yeah. <laughs> 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 you know, had to get you to come and get it out. <laughs> A lot of people ask me, um, trap placement at the dirt hole. Okay. How do I set the trap at the dirt hole? Alright. Always put the dog next to the hole. And there's a reason for that for me. Okay. Standing up here, and maybe you can see a little better. This is in front of the hole like this, and my backing is back here. I always bring the rough stuff that I dug out of the hole, the the little claws or the little stone, I'll bring it back and make a little ridge back to the lever. What does that do? That makes a clear path straight across. Mm -hmm. All right, for him to walk across or to come around and go straight in. Square up. All right, my hole, when I make my hole, I always keep my trial, yo-ho, <laughs> so what's a yo -ho? Yeah, so what in the world like is he that. talking about? I don't want to do it like this. I want my whole like narrow slit down through there, uh, possibly about this wide. And what that do? That makes him come around mm -hmm. and want to uh, look down in there a little more. I need him. I need him in front of that trap. <coughs> All right. How many of you have ever seen? A coyote's foot or a fox's foot in a trap like that, with the toes pointing that way and the heel pointing this way. I'd, I'd reckon to say none of you. No. No. You think they've ever stepped on a trap like that? Well, sure they have. Yeah. What happens? Well, the the way their foot, their leg is laid out as, and, their, and their paw, twist it, so. when they step in, it's going to twist around. Yeah. So, does it matter if it goes this way or this way or what? I just set them all like this so that when I pull the rough stuff back to the levers, then they have a clear path to go across from, from side to side or this way. I don't want them working it from the back of the trap. That's why I use mm -hmm. backing no higher than six inches or so. All right, you don't want to spook them away. All right. Uh, as far as local.